This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the second lecture on uh, Chapter 17 of the free paper F2 lecture notes, which is on budgeting. Uh, and in the first lecture, I explained what we mean by budgets and what the uh, potential benefits of budgeting are. In this lecture, uh, we'll look at how we actually go about preparing budgets. And I did mention earlier that it'll have to be done in stages, you know, that we can't do a budget normally for how much labour we need until we've budgeted how many we're going to produce. There'll be a whole set of little budgets. How many do we think we'll uh, produce next year? Therefore, how much material do I need? Therefore, how much labour do I need? And so on. So there'll be a whole series of little budgets. We'll go through an example in a minute. But the first thing we're going to have to decide always in real life is where are we going to start? What are we going to budget first? And we call this the principal budget factor. Uh, and it, which is paragraph four, section four of the chapter. And I'm not going to read to you what's there. You can read it yourself after, but let me explain. We do need a starting point. And for most businesses, the first thing we'll budget is what is sales. Because only when we know how many we think we're going to sell can we then decide how many we're going to produce. And only when we know how many we're going to produce can we then decide how much material we'll need, how much labour we'll need, and so on. So sales wouldn't only be the starting point. But not always. Let me give you an example. Suppose we make desks. And I think we can sell 20,000 desks next year. But desks need wood. And for some reason, there's a, a limit on how much wood we can buy next year. And we can only get enough wood to make 10,000 desks. And so despite the fact we could sell more, if the wood is limiting us, Fine, we'd better start with a budget for the wood we can get. Then we can decide how many we can produce. And then we can decide how many we're going to sell. So the principal budget factor is the first item to be budgeted. And it's whatever limits the level of activity. Now, you know, why isn't the business going to be bigger next year? What's stopping us being bigger? Usually it will be the sales demand. If customers only want 50,000, fine. We can't do much about it. That's what's stopping us being bigger. Uh, but occasionally, it could be things, as I said, like wood, the material. If the material uh, availability is limited, well, that is what's stopping us producing more, selling more, and being bigger. So that's what we mean by principal budget factor. And as I say, it's usually uh, the demand sales. All right, now let's prepare a budget, or prepare bits of a budget. If you uh, look on the next page in example one, the XYZ company produces three products, X, Y and Z, uh, and for the coming accounting period, budgets are to be prepared using the following information. So we told how many we expect to sell, uh, then we told how much raw material is used, we told something about inventories of finished goods and of raw materials. There's something about the hours below. And we're asked to prepare the following budgets. So a series of little budgets. Let's have a go. First of all, a sales budget. 
Well, I think that's easy because right at the top it says we produce three products for the coming accounting period. We're told what the budgeted sales are. So X, Y, Z. In units, we're budgeting on 2,000 X, 4,000 Y, 3,000 Z. And note the A requires a sales budget. First of all, quantities, well, that's that. You know, that's the target for our sales managers, how many they'd like to sell. Uh, it also wants value of so. We're told the selling price is 100. 130, 150. So the total revenue we're budgeting on 200,000 from X, uh, four, five, 20,000 from Y, and 450,000 from Z. So and I think it's also useful, obviously, to have the total revenue we're budgeting on uh, 70. Uh, 1.17 million. Two, seven, I think, yes, that's right. All right, so that was nice and easy. What about B? Uh, it wants a production budget in units. Well, we know how many we're selling, or we're budgeting on selling. Why uh, isn't the production going to be the same? Ah, because of inventories. They were told halfway down the page what the inventories are uh, uh, for each of the three products at the beginning of the year and what we're budgeting them to, to be at the end of the year. So to get the production, we'll need to adjust by the inventory, changes in inventory. So our production budget, X, Y, Z, uh, we know what our sales are, 2,000 X, 4,000 Y. 3,000 Um Why are we producing different? Well, because of inventories. But if you look at X, we're intending to increase the inventory from 500 units at the beginning to 600 at the end. And surely, therefore, we need to produ uh, produce not just the 2,000 we're going to sell, but another hundred in order to increase the inventories. So increase in inventory. X is going from five to six to a hundred. Therefore, we need to produce 2,100 units. Uh, why? We're selling 4,000, we're increasing inventory by 200, so we need to produce 4,200 units. And Z, uh, sell 3,000, increase inventory by 100. And so, production of 3,100. Uh, in each case, these are in units, <coughs> but it's our plan. Our production manager needs to know how many we want him to produce. Now, of course, now we know how many we're going to produce, we can move on from there to C and decide what materials we're going to use, materials usage budget. It's given us a standard usage of raw material. Each product is using wood and it's using varnish. But surely, we couldn't work out what materials we're going to use in total until we'd done B, until we'd worked out uh, how many units we were going to produce. But now we know the production, we can do materials usage. I'll do them side by side. Uh, wood, varnish, X, we're going to produce 2,100 units. Each one uses five kilos, so a total of 10,500. Why? We're producing 4,200, and each unit uses three kilos, a total of uh, 12,600. And Z, we're producing 3,100. Each unit uses 
two kilos. Uh, a total of six two hundred. And therefore, the total wood we're going to be using. Twenty nine thousand three hundred kilos. And surely it's the total that we're interested in. Uh, whoever's responsible for organising the material doesn't really care whether it's used for X, Y or Z. Then we know we need, we expect to use 29,300. What about varnish, which is in litres? Surely in exactly the same way. Uh, X, 2,100. 2 litres is 4,2. Uh, y, 4,200 units, each one needs 2 litres. And Z, 3,100, each needing 1 litre. Uh, and so a total of... ...15,700 litres. Okay, uh, what do we need now? Ah, a materials purchases budget. Okay, well we know how much, what materials we're going to use. Why should the purchases be different? Because of inventories of raw materials. Uh, almost the last table there. Uh, we're told what the opening inventories of uh, wood and varnish are, and what we're planning the closing inventories to be, and so on just as we were doing earlier, to get the purchases. Uh, we need to adjust the usage, which we budgeted on, by um, the change in inventory. So side by side, wood, varnish, um, the usage, 29,300, 15,700. And what's happening to the inventory? In both cases, the inventory is falling. There's a decrease in inventory. And if we're reducing inventory, surely it means some of the material we're using is being taken from inventory and only the rest of it do we actually need to buy. For wood, the inventory is falling by 3,000, so we're using 3,000 kilos uh, for our production. Uh, we need to use 29,000 in total. Well, if we're taking 3,000 from inventory, it's only the remaining 26,300 that actually need to be purchased. And similarly, varnish, uh, we are going to need to use 15,700, but a thousand of it is coming from inventory. Only the remaining 14,000, oops, 700 litres actually needs to be purchased. And what was wanted here? It wanted quantities. Well, that's how much needs buying. Uh, it also wants um, the budgeted value. Well, no problem. Uh, wood is costing, up near the top, $8 a kilo. Varnish, $4 a litre. And so the budget expenditure on each of them, uh, wood, 26,300 times 8, 210,400. Uh, and varnish, 14,700 times 4. 58,800. So each one straightforward, but see how one budget leads to another budget. We've got this series of plans. We can't get material purchases until we know material usage. We don't know material usage till we know what the production is. We don't know what the production will be until we know what the sales are. Anyway, one final one, E. A labour budget in hours and value. Oops, wrong way. I'll do it in hours first. We're told at the bottom the standard hours per unit. 
And so, how many units are we producing of each? We worked that out earlier. 214231. 214231. Did I get those right? Uh, uh, uh. 214231. Yep. So there's how many units we've budgeted on producing. Uh, the labour hours. X is four hours. Y is six hours a unit. Z is eight hours. And so the budgeted hours in total. 8,400, 25,200, 24,800, the total, 58,400. So there's the budget in hours. It also wants to know the value. Uh, they paid at the rate of three dollars per hour. So in dollars, one hundred and seventy-five, two hundred. And so there we are. Uh, in practice, clearly there'll be um, more budgets. There'll be variable overhead budgets, fixed overhead budgets, and so on. And then ultimately. We could put them all together and produce a budget profit statement. All those little budgets we've done here are called functional budgets. So all the relevant managers will be given their bit of the budget. As I said, we normally put them all together at the end and prepare what's called a master budget. And the master budget, there's no precise rules here, but will normally be um, uh, a budgeted profit statement. Uh, usually, but not always, uh, a budgeted uh, balance sheet or statement of financial position. Uh, very commonly, uh, a capital expenditure budget. By capital expenditure, we're talking about buying new machines and things. Uh, because of the cost involved, uh, we like to prepare a separate budget saying, oh, we'll spend 100,000 on a new machine in January. We'll budget on spending 50,000 on new cars in June or whatever. Uh, and finally, a cash budget. Um, again, not always, I mean, it's up to individual companies what budgets they prepare, uh, but it's very common to produce a budget month by month of how much cash we expect to receive and spend. So we can forecast month by month what our cash balance will be in the bank. Um, it's useful particularly if we discover that one month we're likely to our cash balance to go negative, an overdraft. Well, we need to plan ahead, you know, get permission from the bank to go negative or find a way of borrowing money or try and delay some spending to avoid it going negative. Anyway, there we are, the way we go about preparing the budget, these functional budgets leading ultimately to a master budget. All right, well, again, I'm going to break. This, this was the second lecture. Uh, we'll have one more, uh, talk about different types of budgets, but that'll be the next lecture. <laughs>